everybody. Welcome to our first Friday of 2024. Woohoo! Hello. Our first live stream of 2024. Welcome to the future, baby. To well, the here future we are. Here we go. Uh, we're going to be doing some snow bear with you today. So today marks our official first Friday. So we're we're knocking back uh, the number of Friday live streams that we'll be doing uh, pretty much this year. Uh, because uh, the demands on getting Snow Bear, which is our uh, animated short I'm trying to get animated, um, we're trying to get it done uh, in the first half of the year. And so that's going to dictate me getting any amount of time that I can. And so in an effort to do that, we have decided to do one Friday a month for our public live streams. Yeah, so we figured it out last night that Aaron has to animate completely finished 15 seconds a week to hit our, <laughs> 15 hit seconds deadline. of animation which doesn't sound like a lot but it's a lot yeah that's that's a very tall order yeah to finish so um hand drawn per week so that's what we're going to be shooting for um so anyway uh and so in an effort to maybe promote a little bit and entice some of you guys over you know, we will still be doing our Tuesday and Thursday production streams. We're still doing that. If you're a member at CreatureArtTeacher.com, every Tuesday and Thursday, you guys can join me at 10 a.m. Eastern Time as I make Snow Bear. And so I thought I'd give you a little taste of that today. And uh, there's a little shot that I've been working on that we started this past Thursday, yesterday. And... Um, and I uh, thought we'd work on that today, and you can get a little sense of what it's like to be uh, working with us in the studio as we make make the short. Uh, but before that, do we have any sales going on? Yeah, Mr. actually, ce celebrating the new year, and this is a big one because it relates to membership as well. We've got our new year sale going on this weekend only if you use promo code New Year Twenty Four. So that's New Year, and then the number two four. Uh, you can get 24% off. See what I did there? Because it's 20, 24. Yeah, twofer. <laughs> you got a twofer. Yeah, yeah. A twofer. Yeah, so you get 24% uh, off your entire order, and that's good for memberships, individual classes, brush packs, uh, photo packs, etc. So you have this weekend to get that. New Year 24, 24% off. And we've got a sale on books that I'll mention later, but uh, let's just dive in. It's also a uh, slang for a case of beer in Canada. A, two, a twofer. A twofer? A twofer? Yeah, because it's yeah. 24, 24 beers. Nice. Yeah. A twofer. Twofer. Learned that from my Canadian friends. So, here's a shot. Erica says, those production screams are a really nice membership to the... A nice be benefit to the annual membership. Well, thank you, Erica. This will give you a little sense of what I've got left to do. So, we've been working on this for about a year and a half, uh, production-wise. And here's my timeline right here. Um, everything that's in green is what I have left to animate. Um, everything in purple or pink I've animated. And so that gives you a little sense of, uh, I'm basically trying to take what we did, uh, the same amount of work that we've done in a year and get it done in the next six months. So that's what I'm trying to do. And for those of you that are watching on TikTok, that might be a little bit hard to see, but oh yeah 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 sorry so here's a little section so um we've done this section here where he's sledding whoa let me turn this down i gotta turn the sound off on here yeah oh mute the keyboard that's a good idea i'll do it that way we have um a question while you're doing that have you seen the boy in the heron yet i have seen the boy in the heron i thought it was great uh very miyazaki very it's really out there beautifully animated and uh, I think it's going to get best animated feature this year. Um, so here's a little section where, uh, I mean, so that the uh, everybody can see it well enough. Here's a little section where um, uh, they're sharing a meal, and Snow Bear's horrified by the fact. And then uh, we go into another section where they go sledding together. And there's a whole there's a whole slew of them doing fun things together. So here our polar bear and snow bear are sliding down the hill. It's not all in color, and they see that they're gonna come to an overpass. He ducks. Yeah, we made it, and then he realizes that snow bear didn't quite make it. <laughs> so we got that one done, and now we're coming up on this next section where we see a bunch of walruses, and so our our polar bear 
grabs some icicles and then he comes up and he's playing walrus and so this is the section that we're animating right now and it's getting that walrus is angry and it's a fun little a fun little bit so what we want to do in here is i went ahead and i roughed out this section yesterday and so i've got very rough drawings let me go into uh, tv paint now tv paint software is what i'm using for the animation and so you can see let me turn off my onion skin my first pass when i whenever i do a first pass on a shot i go through very rough and just really focus on the expression the timing the acting and i don't worry about doing really pretty drawings so you can see these are pretty rough um so now the next step is once i've got see his eyebrows going up hello hey ladies so once i get uh once i get the drawings or the animation and the acting in the place that i like then i go ahead and i start to tie it down which means i'm going to redraw and that's what we're going to do today uh, so question, i'm going to knock the opacity down go ahead oh Next. first of all there was a comment below average joe says wow that quota that's three times the quota in the 90s at disney huh uh <laughs> it's fire. actually uh it's more than three times yeah yeah and then uh Chantel no that's no that's no it's more than three times yeah and Chantel says, uh, I have a question. Does it ever feel weird talking into the camera? How long did it take you to get used to that? Uh, it took a, it took a little while. It wasn't too bad. You know, after a while, I always treat the camera like you guys are sitting. I've done enough live lectures that I just imagine you guys sitting here with me and I'm just talking to you. So that's what I do. Um, but yeah, it gets a little weird sometimes. So what I'm going to do now is I want to get my the size of my brush up to about 71%. I'm using the 2B pencil uh, in TV Paint. I haven't changed it at all other than the size. I keep everything uh, just the way it's all set up already in TV Paint. And, um, and I'm just going to go ahead and start redrawing. This first one's pretty easy. Here we go. Bingo. Um, actually, I do want to change something. The sensitivity, I've got it way too loose. So I'm going to change that. I go back and forth on the sensitivity. I got a new stylus, and it works a little bit differently than my last stylus. It's funny because if I have it right in the middle on the tip feel, sometimes it's it's too, it's not sensitive enough. And then, and then I make it a little softer, and it becomes too sensitive. So anyway, there we are. That you might be able to use little buttons on the thing for. I think you can adjust the sensitivity as you go along. Well, that sounds good. If I can do that, that would be great. So ultimately, this will be on ones when he comes up, meaning one drawing for every frame. Right now, I've got it on twos, which is one drawing for every two frames. So here he is coming up. Hey, Amy on uh, TikTok's wondering uh, how much time it took you to be, quote, good on animating. I've been animating for 35 years and I'm still picking up stuff. Uh, but get, it took, go, it took go me get good soon. I have a feeling. <laughs> but it took me, you know, before I, you know, by the time I became an animator at Disney. I became an animator at Disney within, uh, I think, like two years, within a year and a half. But I, looking back on it now, compared to what I know now, uh, I wasn't a very good animator. I learned a lot once I became an animator. I became a passable animator. And then from there, I learned a lot. Uh, Jeff wants to know, the falling snow looks amazing and so lifelike. Did you animate all the flakes or are you using some sort of computer trickery? There's no computer trickery. Uh, some of it I animated it animated, and some are uh, overlays that I purchased. Um, so they, it's, it's white snow over a black overlay. You put that uh, in the composite, in the stack of your timeline. As an alpha channel. As an alpha channel. You set it to screen is the uh, blend mode. And, um, and it, and it just, it gets rid of the black. And so, but if I show, if, uh, let me show you the, the opening shot. Here's one. This is, 
This is a funny comment, Facebook. I just wanted to let you know that since starting to do courses on Creature Art Teacher, my son has started to say, like so, in most sentences. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like so. <laughs> and like so. So, <laughs> so um, this shot, I did everything. So I did, I animated the snow as well. So this is all done in TV paint. And the snow was actually done just with about six or seven snowflakes. And then I, I repeated them. Um, and then this next shot, not this one. This one is uh, my snow as well. So uh, with a combination of some of the overlays. So, um, you know, there's a combination in there. So there you go. And that all of that, the, the animation of, of, the, of the title blowing away, that was done by Stefan Kuhns. Uh, who's a really great artist that we hired to do our title for us. So let's jump back. There we go. Yeah, for people asking, this software is TV Paint. That's what TV Paint software. And if you're on an iPad, uh, I really recommend Dreams. Procreate Dreams. Um, super affordable. It's $20, uh, single purchase, no prescription, prescription, subscription. Ask your doctor about Procreate <laughs> Dreams. And... Uh, I've used that quite a bit as well. Matter of fact, we've we've got a course on using dreams. And we've got courses on TV paint as well. Uh Pineapple Princess uh on TikTok asks Pineapple Princess. Pineapple Princess. Uh how long uh do you plan to make the Snow Bear? Is it a full length movie or is it a five minute short? This is a 10 minute and 27 second short. Yep. 10 minutes, 27 seconds. Yeah, didn't but, it for a while it used to be uh, uh, eight minute? Yeah, it was eight minutes. My goal was to make it six minutes and I just couldn't, I, we let it grow. He was like, all right, let's <clears> do it. <laughs> One thing that people don't realize though is that even though the runtime is going to be like 10 minutes and 20 seconds, there's actually almost 11 minutes worth of animation that has to be done because of cross dissolves. So yes. There, there are shots that overlap each other, but you've still got to have the full animation. So it's like you're getting twice as much animation in that. Yeah, let me show you an example. So here we've got a section. Let me jump up to here. Um, here we've got a section where we're going from, uh, where, did I, where are we at? Right here. So here's an overlap. So we're going from him eating to him on the on the uh, slopes. So that amount of time right there, that's extra animation right there. I've got to add to uh, both shots to cover that, that cross dissolve. So that's twice the animation for that little amount of time. And I've got cross dissolves all throughout. So we've got basically 30 seconds worth of cross dissolves. Uh, did you ever work on Pixar's Elemental? I did not work on Pixar's Elemental. No, I, um, I haven't been with Disney or Pixar uh, since 2010. Uh, I left in 2010. They've been a lot cooler if you did. Yeah. Twitch question, do you ever animate while watching TV? I, you know what, I used to, I find it very difficult. I used to, um, during the Oscar season, like during, when we were making Mulan, um, a lot of the guys, we had several guys that were part of the, um, part of the academy and they would bring screeners in and we were doing overtime. And so we, you know, we would take turns sharing the screeners and we'd watch you know some of the academy nominated movies as we worked late and i found it really difficult to um to work 
and watch television. Now, as far as uh, listening to music, that's a whole different story. So if I'm not animating dialogue, I can listen to music and mm-hmm. uh, and have really no problem. Uh, Carrie on YouTube asks, Hey, Aaron, I'm a newbie animator, and every time I animate, the rough looks decent, but when I do the cleanup pass, it looks shaky and the drawings look inconsistent. Any tips that can help me out? Yeah, well, it's that's something that it really will take time. And you, the rough drawing is looking good because you're not, you don't have to worry too much about making sure everything doesn't jitter and all that. And so when you start getting into the area where you're making sure that your lines are consistent and all, and, uh, you know, that's where a lot of people tend to uh, have their drawings stiffen up. And, um, and then they, they also don't quite have the proportions right. So proportions will vary. And once again, that, you know, over time, that'll just get better and you just got to keep working on it. Uh, Facebook question. <clears throat> did you use 3D animation in the 2D Lion King film? And if yes, how? Did you use 3D as the sketch and then draw on it? Or was it rendered without drawing after? So in Lion King, they did use 3D very little, but they did use 3D. The biggest part of the 3D that they used was the wildebeest stampede. All the wildebeest were CG. And you got to remember, this is still early days of CG. It was 1993, 92, when we were doing all this stuff. Uh, do you have so hold on, oh, real sorry. quick. Sorry, I was just taking a drink. So, so they had some swarming and herding um, kind of programming going into the, uh, the, the herd of the, uh, of wildebeest, you know, when, when, if they got a certain distance away from each other, then they would come back. But if they got too close to each other, they'd push away. And it was this really interesting, um, result that they got out of that, that created this, you know, really great stampeding herd of wildebeest. Um, and so that was, you know, that's what enabled us to create, you know, this massive herd that comes running down and, and you know, created this incredibly memorable scene. Uh, beyond that, uh, everything else was done traditionally uh, in The Lion King. So, like I said, it was very early on in, in the CG days. Go ahead, Dustin. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. I, I'm, I'm the one at the fault there. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> Uh, do you have a favorite scene you worked on uh, when you worked on Mulan? On Mulan? On Mulan. Uh, I've got, yeah, there's a, there's a few. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed the introduction of uh, the Gang of Three with Mulan when she comes into the camp for the first time and she meets Yao and and uh, Ling and Chen Po. Um, it's, you know, where you really get to see their personalities and um, and by that point, you know, even though it's the first time you see them in the movie, it, it wasn't the first time I animated them because movies are put together a lot like a, a puzzle. And so you have certain pieces that are ready to animate before others, and it's not always, you know, chronological in the film. And so, um, matter of fact, uh, the first shot I, one of the first shots I animated in the movie is where he goes, I'm going to hit you so hard, it'll make your ancestors dizzy. And that's that's where she first meets him, um, coincidentally enough. But then some of the last shots I did in the movie were in that same section because they rewrote that whole part of the movie several times over. And so some of the last animation I did in the movie was the rest of that sequence. That's funny. In Procreate Dreams, how do you add sound? You uh, you create a new track and you bring you bring in an MP3 track, and you literally just lay it right on the line. And I think when you click the plus button, add a new track, it literally gives you an option. It gives you that option. Do you yes. want it to be a sound uh, audio track? Yeah. Uh, watched Lion King and found your name in the credits. Yes. How is being supervising animator different? Well, usually, at least in the 2D animation days, a supervising animator uh, designs the character. So I was responsible for designing Nala. Uh, And then you're responsible for not just the animation, but if you have a 
crew of animators working with you on that character, you're responsible for the consistency of that character, making sure uh, that the other animators are drawing the character right, making sure the, anim the acting is consistent, um, that sort of thing. And so you, you literally are supervising the animation of that character. How would you animate hair? Hair, I, I always animate hair in uh, big clumps and shapes. You never think about hair as individual hairs. So if I'm animating, let me show you. So let's say you've got a character and their hair is blowing in the wind. I would think of the hair in big shapes first. We have... And think of the energy blowing through the hair in waves, almost like water or a flag. A flag is another thing to think about. So if I've got this big wave coming up and the hair coming right here, there, there's some hair coming off of this head, this nice cheesy looking head. Okay, so in the next drawing... I would think of, here's the head. Now this, this energy has to go through the hair. So I'm gonna think of this wave as moving through the hair. See this? We got this wave coming through. Here's the ear. So I'm thinking I'm not really drawing individual hairs as much as I'm drawing shapes and big clumps. So if I flip through here, you can start to see just with two drawings, you can start to see the movement of that energy moving through the hair. Now, if I create a third drawing, if you watch Pocahontas, Pocahontas is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. There's some really great stuff that Glenn Keane did. So here I've got that energy. See how that wave moves right through, that top of the wave moves right through the hair? That's the energy moving through. You know, a lot of animation is understanding physics. Instagram comment, Aaron, if you're ever in Del Mar, you should go to the free free flight bird sanctuary and draw some birds. Oh, Ooh. yeah. That sounds fun. Uh, All right. So if I if I click through here now. Turn that off. You can start to see just with the three. I just did three drawings, but you can start to feel that that energy. And the more you flip the, your drawings the more you can see where it needs to go. And so it's very important to keep flipping those drawings. So that's a quick three drawing explanation on how to draw hair. Carrie asks, how was Disney able to make water look real in 1937? Like in Snow White, there's a shot where the animals are, are taking her to the dwarf's cottage and she <laughs> passes by a stream and a river and it looked real. It's done with ripple glass. It's done with glass that is literally rippled and it distorts the images underneath. They put it over the top of textured water or, or, or whatever the, the a drawing of water. basically. Yeah. Yeah. And they take a picture and then move it a, a little increment and take another picture, just like animation. They move that across the screen and, um, and you get this illusion of water. Uh, Twitch question, by any chance, did you work on the Goofy movie? 
I wish I did, but I did not. Well, that movie. That was a, a video department, right? I think that was tough. Yeah, I think that yeah. was tough. Well, it, it, was, it wasn't a feature. It wasn't it? feature, yeah. So they had, I think it was done in Australia. They actually really had a great animation studio that, you know, they did direct to video, uh, but they were a really great quality studio um, in Australia, in Sydney. For people that ask that question about Ripple Glass, <clears throat> next week we're actually starting to film a 2D effects animation class, and we're going to talk about things like that. Yes, right? we and are. Water and smoke and fire. Um, Joey Mildenberger, who's a effects 2D anim effects animation veteran of many years, we've worked, we've known each other for, geez, for almost thirty or for thirty years now. And uh, Joey's going to be teaching that course for us. Uh, speaking of courses and events, we've got an upcoming workshop in Procreate on Procreate Dreams. And someone was asking how you import sound earlier. Well, in that live workshop, we're going to be animating dialogue. So the whole workshop is going to be Aaron teaching you how to animate dialogue in Procreate Dreams. So he'll show you how to, we're going to provide an audio track. I'll show you how to import it and then animate the mouth shape so it looks like your character's talking. Spots are limited for that event. <clears throat> so if you're interested in signing up, it's Saturday, February 24th. It's a live all-day workshop online. Uh, so you'll be able to tune in from anywhere in the world. Uh, if you can't watch it live, as long as you register, you will be able to get a replay of the event, but you have to pre-register. So you can do that. You can sign up for limited spots by going to creatureartteacher.com slash live. That's creatureartteacher.com slash live. Uh, Style-wise, do you prefer animating on twos or threes? I actually don't animate on threes. I animate on twos or ones. To me, I get sm I like having the smoother animation. If I'm animating on threes, that's just a, a it's a, like right now. If you look at my timeline, I've got twos and fours and some threes in there. That's just because I don't have all the in betweens done yet. Who's your favorite character to animate in Brother Bear? Uh, well, I, I directed Brother Bear, so I didn't do a lot of animation. I did some animation, but um, I animated Kenai. I've got some. I've actually got some of the animation in my collection of the shots I animated of Kenai. And we've actually got a couple of uh, people asking, "What is the name of this program?" This is TV Paint software. TV Paint. And can you explain your process with lighting? With what? With lighting. Well, uh, lighting, uh, there's, I don't have a distinct process. Lighting for me is all part of the kind of the background layout process. So I think of layout as, or lighting as part of the, you know, composition, mood, all of that. As I'm figuring out, uh, you know, the mood of a shot, the tone of a shot, the composition of a shot, the lighting is part of all of that. Because your lighting is going to give you darks, lights, shadows, um, is it is it flat lighting? Is it direct lighting? Are there shadows? Are there uh, not shadows? You know things like that. Did you work on Cinderella? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. I was born in 1968, and Cinderella, I think, was done in 1954. <laughs> so yes. So yes. So yes. You animated <laughs> while you were still in the womb. And it was a long right. gestation, apparently. Right, right. Yeah, and, um, and and I don't think my mother had hit puberty yet. <laughs> uh, can I ask why you left Pixar and or Disney? I left Disney uh, back in 2010 after Dustin's mother, my wife, uh, passed away uh, from breast cancer. I was having a hard time after uh, she passed away. And so I decided to uh, kind of start over, find make a new start. Uh, and that's what we did. So we, I was, I'm from Florida and we had been, we had moved to California. So I 
we packed everything up, sold the house. I left Disney after 21 years and uh, we came back to Florida from Los Angeles and I started over. And that's why I left, left Disney. Twitch comments. Uh, hey, Aaron, Nick, and Dustin. I got my volume two art book delivered today. It looks amazing. I have all of your books and I love them all. Thank you so nice. much for making them. Well, speaking of books, we've actually got a sale going on this weekend. If you go to PreacherArtTeacher.com slash books, uh, we've got Aaron's volume two book and his 100 drawings book are both available. We have signed copies available of each. I go to full screen. Go to full screen, Dustin. And right now, if you're in the USA, you can get free shipping this weekend only. This is a big hardback book, Aaron's Art of uh, Aaron Blaze Volume 2. It's a 9 by 12 book. It's a coffee table book. It's a great book. Full color. Large. Lots lots of art. Lots of art. It covers about 30 and years For of people art. that ask me, hey, do you only do animals? No, I do figurative art as well. These are two paintings that I did as demonstrations for one, one of our courses. One is an oil painting and the other one is digital. So yeah. the, the book covers traditional and digital. Yeah, this is an acrylic painting I did of an elephant that I saw in Africa. So um, it covers all kinds of stuff. 250 pages of my art from over the years. This book is huge, folks. Absolutely massive. <laughs> so there you go uh, leon says i got your 100 drawings book signed by you at lightbox nice fantastic yeah aaron also has a 100 drawings book if you go to preacherarchteacher.com slash books both are available and again this weekend you can get free shipping if you're in the usa 100 drawings book is floating no there's one over there i think is there one Sorry. it's all right Hey, go to the go to the wide shot again, Dustin. Yep. There we go. And there's the 100 drawings book, full of 100 ink drawings. These are all traditional, no digital drawings. Uh, lots of just fun little little drawings that I thought would be interesting. And that book is 95% sold out now. So that book is supposed to be out of print. Yes. Our volume one is out of print. Of yeah. our, so if you're interested in getting volume two or Aaron's 100 Drawings book, again, we've got signed copies available of both. Get them while you can because they will not last. Uh, YouTube question. Hey, Aaron, I bought your drawing and animation courses, and they're amazing. But I do have a question. How would you be able to animate camera moves, like a fighting scene in anime? Well, a lot of times, I don't. we don't animate the camera move. You actually do a camera move. And then, you know, as the you, you, you plan the move ahead of time, and then you animate according to it. Um, other times, like if you have rotating perspectives and things like that a lot of times you want to do an animatic and uh which is basically you know a, a, a an initial camera move that you can uh, plot your animation to uh but otherwise yeah it's just move, doing a move over the animation itself a bunch of people saying they just got your volume two book today some people in europe so oh great nice I think with the holiday and New Year's and stuff like that, people are starting to get copies coming in. Uh, can you explain your approach to telling the story of Brother Bear and what inspired you to write it? So Brother Bear uh, was inspired first off just by, from a tonal standpoint from Native American myths and legends. I love, I've always been a fan um, of Native American stories and culture and um and so when we started writing brother bear we wanted it to have that tone and then one of the great things that native myths and legends do is that there's always a moral they're always trying to teach a lesson to help in life and so we wanted to give that kind of slant to the story as well 
Now, we also set the story back during the Ice Age um, so that it would give us a little bit of cultural leeway in the way that we tell the story. And so we wanted to be able to uh, kind of make up our own culture, and, but using what we learned in our research of Native, uh, Native cultures in the area of, you know, the Athabascans and, and that sort of thing in, in uh, Alaska. Um, but then create kind of an earlier version of that. And so, and then it was really about what, what's emotional, you know, what we sat for months talking about different stories of our, our own experiences and, um, you know, all the guys working on the directing and producing myself and my co-director, Bob Walker and Chuck Williams, our producer, we're all brothers and we started talking about experiences with our own brothers and our families and and a story started to come out of that they're not bro- they're not each other's brothers they all no, no, no. yeah brothers. exactly sorry yeah, yeah we all have brothers and so and we and, you know the the story of brother bear is very much based around the relationships of of three brothers facebook question do you have plans to make a full course book about drawing and animation like beginner, intermediate, advanced, etc.? Yes. Book, they said? Yeah, book. Yes. So we want to take our animation courses and our drawing courses our anatomy course, a lot of the different courses that we have now that are popular. And we also we want to create book versions of those. So the short answer is yes, and but we just don't have it scheduled yet. Uh, Twitch question, any tips on line art? What goes through your mind when you're varying your line weight? And do you have lighting in mind when you're in the drawing phase? Yes. So <clears throat> foreground line work, uh, line weight tends to be a little heavier. Line weight and shadow tends to be a little heavier. Um, uh, I try to do line that follows contour. There's a lot of different things that go into... The line weight um but those are those you know that's a few of them um by the way whatever platform you're on if you hit that like button or the subscribe button or the share button or all of those particular buttons it really does help us a lot so we really appreciate you commenting and liking and sharing and helping spread the word spread the word how many passes do you typically do when you start rough animation and do you also do a tie down pass? Yeah, so I'm doing the tie down pass right now. This is that's what I'm doing right now, and um, and some might call this a cleanup pass because my tie down pass is very tight. Um, I'm trying to do this without having a, a really a cleanup pass on the on the show. Um, but typically, the first pass is figuring out my thumbnails, and so that's an, and for me. This was in the storyboard stage because I storyboarded all of it. And so I storyboarded it in the way that I wanted to see it. Um, we don't usually have that luxury uh, on a feature because the storyboard artist isn't the animator. And so often it'll get re reimagined um, uh, from the animator's point of view. But in this case, because I'm, I'm animating it as well, I storyboarded it in the way that I wanted to see it animate. And so that was my thumbnail pass, basically. Thumbnails being the, the little drawings that you do to plan out the choreography and the expressions and the poses. And so I do that. And then I take those and I use them very strictly. I, I stick to them very, very, very closely. And I use those as my poses and my animation. So I go through and rough it out very quickly. Very much like what you see here. You know, these these poses right here are exactly what I created in um in the rough version or in the storyboard version and so then i just go through and and basically create the motion create the action and then uh and then you know then it's just going through tying it down like i'm doing now and then adding the in-between drawings Dustin, any TikTok questions over there? Um, just a couple of re- repeats from earlier. Uh, mainly, uh, what software are you using for the newcomers? Yep, TV Paint software. 
And uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, um, mention what, what the hardware is that you're using. I'm working on a Mac Pro. Uh, is there anything more to say to that? I'm using a Mac Pro computer. It's a yeah, tower. It's, it's a, a tower, yeah. And, and then, then I'm on a Cintiq, a Wacom Cintiq 32 Pro. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, they don't make the 32s anymore. Um, but uh, they do make a 27 that's really cool. Uh, but this is the 32 Pro. I've had it for several years. I love it. How can I know if an animation career is right for me? What should I know before going in? Uh, just some background. I'm autistic and have ADHD. I want to work for an independent animation studio. Um, okay. Uh, be prepared to draw. If you wanted, If you want to be an animator, the biggest thing is you're going to be doing thousands and thousands of drawings. And uh, so that's that's your future. So if, if, doing if you don't like to do lots of drawings, then maybe animation isn't quite right for you. But, I mean, you can do character design. You can do uh, background painting, you know, where you're, you're not having to be as prolific in the drawing area. When using video as reference for drawing animals, is it okay to pause the video? I'm not too experienced in anatomy yet, or should I just bite the bullet and try not to pause the video? No, you can do whatever you want. There's no hard, fast rules. Everyone gets ho so hung up on, you know, cheating and what you can't... No, if, if pausing the video helps you learn, then pause the video. I pause the video all the time. And I've been drawing animals for 40 plus years. So it's whatever is going to help you. Now, understanding the anatomy, a good, a good exercise is to continue to draw while the video is playing or drawing live animals and pulling from your anatomy knowledge as you, as you learn it. But, you know, until then, yeah, you know, feel free to do whatever you want to do. That's going to help you, help you get the result that you need. Assuming you don't want to crop your animation, do you need to choose the correct aspect ratio when animating in Procreate or TV Paint? Yes, you do need to pick the right aspect ratio. Now, that could vary shot to shot. If, if you've got yeah. a... Um, you could make a bigger shot with the intention of making it smaller. You know, you could do something like that. But generally, yep. yeah, it's all got to... You know, the movie's going to go out at one ratio, so you got to know what you're working at you don't want to blow it up it's always better to work larger and scale down than exactly. go the other direction you don't want to blow it up and Nothing yeah aaron works at 16 by 9 yes generally speaking yeah at 4k Hey, Aaron, Brother Bear is one of my favorite movies. As I'm from Brazil, I don't get many references from indigenous culture. Is there a book or documentary that you recommend I see to understand? For, uh, I'm not quite sure I'm Maybe understanding, and actually it goes to a, another understanding question. Understanding the film ourself, itself or understanding? Well, understanding indigenous culture. And actually... Well, there's goes, obviously in Brazil, there's tons of indigenous cultures in brazil i'm assuming they're referring to north american north yeah american. there's no specific book that i can point you to um there's so much stuff online that's all i would just google whatever it is that you're interested in and just there'll be a lot of stuff that comes up but there's no single there's no single uh book that i can point you at right now no Another South America. Hello from South America. I heard you say once that you started drawing birds. In Peru, there there are the most types of species of birds in the world. You should do a course and you should, you should come down here, do a course and see some birds. Pretty please. You know, I would love to get down to Peru. I want to do a, a big Amazon trip. I have a question. How many hours do you usually take with the Snow Bear animation? I'm not a member, but I just want to know. Well, when I'm on with the crew, uh, I'm usually on at least two hours, sometimes up to four hours. On the live time, streams, yeah. On the live streams. But I'm I'm drawing six, seven, 
it's up to sometimes nine hours a day. Yeah, Aaron's animating on Snow Bear every day, sometimes yep. even on the weekends. Yep. Actually, often on the weekends. He was working on New Year's Day. Yep. Yeah, I'm just, I'm always trying to, you know, it, it doesn't get done itself. That's the thing. And animation is such a labor intensive endeavor. You just got to do it. Otherwise, it just doesn't get done. Hey, Aaron, what, how many frames per second is Snow Bear being animated at? And do you have any tips on how to animate? something faster than 24 frames per second. Okay, so it is 24 frames per second. That's what I'm animating at. And um, all I've ever animated is 24 frames per second. I've done a little bit here and there at 30 frames. Um, but really, my brain is wired to think about action in 24 frames a second. Um, if, I, if I animate anything faster than that, my animation comes out looking too, too quick. Uh, and only because I don't have the experience of animating anything at a, you know, at a higher frame rate. But that's the, that's the key is just getting a sense of what that frame rate means. What, you know, one frame of 24 frames per second means something completely different when you're talking about one frame of 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second or 120 frames a second. Um, so those are the things you want to take into consideration. But if you want to do animation, I don't really recommend doing anything higher than 24. I mean, I guess you could do 30, um, but you can get really great, lifelike, smooth, beautiful animation at 24 frames per second. Even 12 frames, you can get some pretty good stuff. It's just, you know, when you start getting into faster action, you'll start getting some ratcheting in, in the animation. Uh, when you make a short or full animation, usually how many frames do you have to draw per day? What is the... the I don't know about frame numbers, but, um, well, for instance, to do Snow Bear, to get it done, uh, we have to do 15 seconds per week, which is 5 seconds per day, which is 24 times 5 is 120, 122, 21, 22. Yeah, finished drawings per day. That's frames. And then if, frames. And if that average is on twos, then we're talking uh, 60, 60 some odd drawings per day. And so far sitting with you guys, I've done eight drawings or I'm up to eight drawings. So it doesn't go fast. So you can see that, you know, you just got to sit and I usually take about 20 minutes for lunch. If I don't go out, sometimes I'll go out. So it'll take a little longer, but usually I just take about 20 minutes for lunch, grab something to eat. And then, you know, cause I work at home. So then I just come right back and, uh, put, plop myself back into my chair and go back to work. Uh, Instagram question. Hi, from Denmark. Is, hey. it, is it true that the visuals in The Little Mermaid, such as the buildings and landscapes, were based on Denmark? And if so, how does that part of the preparation of an animated movie work? Well, I, I don't know if it were ba if it was based on Denmark. That I haven't heard, I, I but I know, it was because, I know it's Hans Christian Andersen. Yeah, so. it's, yeah it's, it's a Danish story, so it wouldn't surprise me if they... Yeah. Um, but all of that just comes in the research phase of, of whatever it is that you're doing. So, um, you know, a lot of times we, we want authenticity, believability to the worlds that we're creating. And so we'll look at other places that have done it before, since places in Denmark and Copenhagen or whatever. And, um, and, uh, and then we, you go from there. Uh, Leon asks on YouTube, hey, Aaron, this is not a digital animation question. What program would one use to record cell animation? I'm trying to figure out a setup for that. We use Dragon Frame. We can show, actually, we could probably go full screen and point. It's a little messy over there, but we can point to this. Aaron, you want to turn it? Yeah. Camera. You'll have to talk. Which one is it? Is it this one? It's all this. So I don't know if you can see. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So over in the corner, if, if you want to point to it. Yeah, so I'm going to block it a little bit. But... It's a bit messy, 
So this is a down shooter, so the camera would... Yeah, so you mount the camera on that down shooter, and right down where Nick's pointing is where you put the drawings. And that camera would then be hooked up to the computer, and I can shoot, I can shoot one drawing at a time, and it gets digitized into the computer, and then we can control timing, we can control playback, you can composite, you can do all kinds of stuff. And we that's use, all done with Dragon Frame software. Yeah, the software we use is called Dragon Frame, which is it's intended for stop motion animation, but it works great for for cell animation. <clears throat> if um, you check out on our course, we have a course on paper animation. Uh, which is on sale right now and actually aaron walks you through that portion of the process we don't do actually any cells but it's the same process whether you're doing just the the pencil tests or the cells and actually uh, for those of you just joining us we actually have a sale going on a new year's sale at creature art teacher uh, right now if you use promo code new year 24 you can get 24 percent off your entire order that's good for memberships that's good for courses that's good for brushes photo packs any order over ten dollars you can get 20 percent uh 24 percent off if you use promo code new year 24. and we've also got a one dollar character design course still on sale if you go to creatureartteacher.com learn you can get aaron's extremely popular character design course it's uh 16 hours long over 20 videos you can get that for just one dollar uh creatureartteacher.com slash learn oh hex on tiktok says uh i gave my si uh, sibling your character design course as a gift for christmas and they loved it awesome. all right and you only had to spend a dollar yeah, all of the classes on our website can be sent as gifts, by the way. Uh, so when you do your storyboard, do you have an image imagined already, or do you do that after? No, I've got an image imagined already. I'm not, I'm not if I'm following, unless you mean like a, a design for the for the character, that all depends on if, if it's been designed yet. I I... I Ideally, I like to have designs done before the storyboarding process. Uh, I know you don't typically use reference photos that you don't personally own, but what guidelines would you suggest when using Googled image Im for using Googled images ethically? Don't copy. That's basically what it comes down to. Don't copy verbatim. I, I use Google Images, but it's it's a lot of times it's to check uh, anatomy accuracy. I'll do my own poses. I'll do um, a lot of times it's to get a mood, a, an inspiration. Uh, but I never ever ever copy verbatim. That's that's the big no no. Oh, uh, someone said TV Paint also works with down shooters. I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah, because you can remember we we did that with the. Uh, oh yeah, just imported straight. Yeah, away. yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, how would I animate a flowing ocean by hand? I'm currently working on an animated short myself that I call the Turtle and the Girls, and I'm it's set on an island, and I'm kind of stuck. Any tips? <laughs> Well, if you watch my if watch my live stream that we did last Friday, and I can give you, I, I show you how to do some water, and that animating, that's a whole course, animating waves and flowing ocean and all that. That's not something I can just answer your question. Um, that you know you got to understand fluid simulations and all that in your brain in order to to literally simulate it in your drawings. You got to understand how fluids work and, and waves work and all of that. Um, but there's great ways of faking that with PNG files. And, and that's what I did last week uh, to show how to do ripples and, and you know, small waves and things like that in, in uh, uh, Premiere or any other compositing software that you can use. Matter of fact, let me show you really quick. I've got... Hello from Johannesburg, South Africa. Yeah. Yeah, let us know in the comments wherever you're watching from. 
So here's here's a kind of a quick fake version of some ripple effects that I did. That that was a very uh here's another one. This one's a bit more successful. And then uh I've got another one down here. Here's one with some sparkles on it. Once again, none of this uh the only thing that I animated in this was the the actual sparkle. And I literally only animated one sparkle and then I I repeated it all over the place. So a lot of this is just using uh PNG files of of water shapes that I I have going over each other and it creates a really nice uh effect. Which so if this is something that might help you um, then check out our live stream that we did last week because I, I take you through the whole process. Which, by the way, you used your water brushes to create that texture. Yes. And those water brushes are still on sale for a dollar at Creature Art Teacher. So if you go to CreatureArtTeacher.com, all of our brushes are still, brush sets are just one dollar. And if you add, you know, 10 of them into your cart, that'll make you eligible for that 24% off code. <laughs> the goofball. Uh, Joseph says, I've only just seen Brother Bear recently, and I love the detail of not giving the bears opposable thumbs when they hold things, like, <laughs> like when Coda is hitting Kenai with the stick trapped against his body. Thank you. Yeah, we really wanted to stay true to the world. And so if you don't have thumbs, how else are you going to pick up a stick? That was something that Alex Cooperschmidt who was the supervising animator of that character, and he animated those shots, he had to figure out how the heck he was going to do it. And, uh, and it was cool. He came up with a really great solution. Uh, YouTube comment, if this was physical media, I'd so be spending all my money on a cell of Glenn's face right now. <laughs> well, we are going to do some cells. We're going to do some limited edition uh, cells yep. from, from the production. That'll be in the very near future so keep your eyes peeled for that yeah maybe okay. this will, maybe these will be a candidate for that i definitely think these will be a candidate yeah uh someone by the name of hex on tiktok here is asking uh uh i feel like i know the answer but can we get the dragon frame set up here on in in tiktok i can't what I, uh, uh, because Mikey, can you talk a little louder it's, oh, because... just a, it's just a down shooter camera. This is for people on TikTok. Yeah. Oh, 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 TikTok oh. Yeah. Didn't see the, uh... yeah. So it's just a little. It's hard to, to recap the whole thing, but. So here, I'm pushing his expression. If you see his eyebrows come up, I'm really I want him to kind of ham it up. Twitch Twitch question: Was Sister Bear ever in the talks at Disney? It sounds like a possible spinoff for sequel to Brother Bear. Not that I know of. Um, there could have been if there were uh, any fem female filmmakers doing it. One of the things we try to do or we tried to do at Disney is um, tell stories that really we could associate with, which is why Brother Bear was told by guys that were brothers, you know, and we try to, tr you know, we, we want to stay true to the subject matter. But there, there, you know, I doubt that there ever was, but, you know, there's no. It's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. Yeah. Facebook question. Will The Simpsons ever end its run? <laughs> Who knows? Yes. Yes, The Simpsons will end their run. Statistically, when? 100%. The failure rate of everything is 100%. Exactly. Time. We do know that in about 6 billion years, the sun will engulf the earth. So at that point, The Simpsons will be done. Unless it's been moved to Mars by then. Although it, <laughs> right. when the sun explodes, that'll engulf the whole solar system. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. What is your favorite Disney film? Bambi. Bambi. Uh, Facebook question. Did it ever happen that a director rejected your drawings and you had to redraw it again, redraw again the animation at Disney? Yes. 
every shot that I did on Lion King. I had a director on the Lion King that never ever approved my first pass. Not once. I would do a shot when, when they would issue the shot. He'd say, you know, I'm not quite sure what we want to do here. Why don't you just do what you think and then and then show it to me? And I'd do it, and then he'd go, no, let's do it this way. And then he'd tell me what to do. It used to drive me nuts. I think I'd be animated stick figures on that first pass at that point. Well, that's I finally got smart and started doing very rough passes. I was a young animator. Uh, was cleanup considered a less fun task to do in your days at Disney or given to less experienced animators? It often sounds like a more difficult job to keep consistent lines and look, etc. It's it's It ha definitely has its own challenges, and it depends on who you talk to. There are a lot of people, especially in cleanup leadership positions, that really loved cleanup and had no aspirations of, of you know, doing animation or anything like that. And, and uh, But then there was other people myself included that you know for them cleanup was kind of a stepping stone to get to uh to be animators and so i really wanted to be an animator uh, uh but i was in cleanup at the time and so you you know you do the job that you're on to the best of your ability and and you become dependable and so then you know I, even though i didn't want to do cleanup i did the best job at cleanup as i could and then um and I got known as a guy that could draw the characters really well, that, you know, as a result of that. And that, then all of a sudden the directors were coming to me to do extra drawings for this or that. And, and, um, and it helped me down the road. Uh, Zanji says, Ronnie Williford once told me that he redid a shot that was approved the second pass through, but it was actually the same shot both times. He didn't, didn't yes. change it. Yep. I know that story. I found Zanji on Netflix last night. Oh, really? Uh huh? Yeah. Where's my phone? Oh, it's right there. I got to show it Zanji to you. If you Netflix. Yeah, we were, we were watching Netflix and Zanji's doppelganger was on there. That's funny. <laughs> doppelganger. I got a photo of it and I sent it to him. Hello from the Philippines. Hello from Buenos Aires. Hello from Miami, Washington, D.C., Connecticut, England, the U.K. Hello from the North Pole. Well... That sounds suspicious, Martin Berger. <laughs> Hello from Israel. Have you seen Wolf Song, the short cartoon by Toniko? Uh, I'm not sure how you say the last name, Pantoja. Uh, and if so, what did you think about it? I have not. So I have no thoughts on it. This is a fun drawing to do. Hi. As an aspiring Hi. as an aspiring animator, I've always admired the art of storytelling with a clever twists and turns. Could you provide some advice on how to write a great story with captivating twists and turns? Yes. Take your first instinct and throw it out. Then then go with your next and uh and throw that out. And then go you know, the, so very often the solution we come up with for a story uh is cliche it's uh predictable and so very often we take that you know as a habit we would take that first solution that we would come up with and we would just throw it out then we'd force ourselves to come up with something else but a lot of times too in creating your your structure for a story um Try to create, when you create your, your first act, jump to your third act. They should reflect each other in some way. They should be mirrors of each other in some way. And they should, the, the ending of your story should be a logical conclusion to what you set up in the beginning. And then you go back and you figure out all that connective tissue in between, which is no easy feat. But very often especially if, when you have your your thematic figured out which is another thing you know understanding your theme what is your story about um when you get that worked out and you work out your 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 beginning and your ending then you start 
coming up with something that will start to feel a little bit more original or at least cohesive and then you can look for more originality in there instagram question what software was used in disney uh for 2d animation paper and pencil yeah, that was those, our software yeah, all those films were done on paper and pencil now when we colored you know the the drawings the physical drawings that were done on paper they were photographed and digitized into the computer and then they were colored uh in the computer so um but as far as the animation itself that was all hand drawn right on paper that was the software or hardware i should say <laughs> I like these drawings. Uh, when will Snow Bear come out? Well, we're sh we're hoping to have it out by Christmas of this year. <laughs> we want it to be a Christmas release this year. Who we're usually, hoping to have it done by by August. Who usually drew or animated the side characters in films, like the villagers in Beauty and the Beast, or the non-talking animals in The Lion King? Was this done by different teams, or did you also contribute to this? No, they are usually done by junior animators. Uh, if it was simple enough, if they were uh, more complex, then they would get animators to come in and, and uh, other animators that have a little more experience to come in and, and hit them. A good example of that is the are the animals in the opening of The Lion King when they're all heading to see the birth of Simba. Um they uh, a lot of those shots were done by a you know it's a horrible thing to say but we used to kind of say oh that's an a animator a b animator a c animator or a d animator um usually or c animator we didn't go to d but like a c animator is a junior animator that really had not a lot of experience a animators obviously were the supervisors and then you had your b's that were in between and a lot of those shots in the opening of the lion king were done by a animators that were waiting for their other shots to be ready. Uh, Carrie asks, why is it that when I animate at 24 frames per second, my animation looks too fast, even though I have 24 drawings? How close does the drawing have to be to look right? That varies. And so if you want slower action, you have to make sure that you're, you're, you're moving your character at smaller increments between drawings. And remember, 24 frames is one second. So the action is probably going to be longer than one yeah. second. So, you... so all of these drawings you see here, this whole shot is all, it's two seconds and what, what, what did I say? It's uh, 210. It's 50, 57. It's 209. So this is, this is two seconds and nine frames. So uh, ultimately, this will have uh, probably about, because uh, I have a, a 16 frames of, of emptiness in the beginning, um, 57, probably, it'll probably be 40, 30, 40 drawings, 35 drawings, something like that, because I have some ones in here too. Uh, hey, Aaron, I just started your Procreate Dreams course. I'm a young animator just starting animation. Right on. Nice. Very cool. Thank you for getting that. By the way, we do have a Procreate Dreams course on our website available for just $1. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash dreams, you can pick up Aaron Blaze's Procreate Dreams course for only $1. And we've got a live workshop coming up uh, where Aaron's going to be teaching how to animate voice dialogue in procreate dreams that's going to be on saturday february 24th as opposed to psychic di dialogue yep, psychic dialogue yep <laughs> um so that is on saturday february 24th that's an all-day workshop event and spots to that are limited so if you're interested in that sign up at creatureartteacher.com slash live and the one dollar course i mentioned is a great way to get your feet wet before that live event Uh, do you prefer uh, hand-drawn on paper animation or doing it all digitally? When I'm working on a production, 
I prefer the uh, digital. I like hand drawn no matter what, hand drawn digitally. I don't like to do CG, but um, drawing digitally uh, really speeds the process up because I don't have to shoot. Shooting takes a lot of time. That's something people don't realize. It takes a ton of time. And that shooting, that's the down shooter we were talking about, yeah. photographing it. When you, yeah, when, you, when you're animating on paper, once a shot is done, you've got to shoot it. You've got to get it shot you know, on camera. And that always takes, sometimes it takes a couple of hours per, per shot. And, and think so, about it this way. You accidentally have your finger in a shot. You've got to go back and redo that. You know, there's all kinds of stuff yeah. that can come into play. But at least nowadays, you know, you can just go back and replace a, a drawing. Back in, you know, back when I started, if you messed up a shot, if you messed up a drawing, you had to reshoot the whole thing. By any chance, did you make the penguin animation that they used in the Procreate Dreams showcase? Yes, I did. Yep. The Procreate came to us uh, back in January of last year and told us about this new software that they were coming out with. And they asked if we would do some animation in it so that they could use it to promote their software. And so we came up with the idea of the penguin and uh, pitched it to them and they liked it. And so I went and took a few couple of months off of Snow Bear, uh, or at least not full time Snow Bear, and uh, went and animated it. I'm a motion designer who wants to pick up skills in animation. I don't, I don't know drawing, but I know animation principles. I don't know where to start. Please suggest to me where I should get started. My animation course. That's <laughs> the best. Yeah, we've got a web. Uh, we've got a. Aaron has a website, creatureartteacher.com. We have over seven hundred hours of yeah. art and animation lessons. So you can learn drawing. You can learn the principles of animation. You can learn advanced techniques like acting for animation. Um, yeah, just to be clear, if you want to do two D hand drawn animation, you got to learn how to draw. So that's, that would be my best piece of advice for you is if you don't draw, start learning how to draw. And the best way to learn to draw is to draw from life. Draw what you see around you and just do it religiously. Yeah. So wait, I can't learn how to draw just by plugging something into my brain? Not yeah. yet. <laughs> Not yet. I'm sure it's down the road. And uh, for a couple of newcomers that have arrived, what, what is the uh, software you're using? This is TV Paint Software, made by TV Paint. <laughs> TV Paint. And I'm drawing on a Wacom Cintiq 32 Pro, which is a big pen display uh, screen. It's huge, folks. Massive. Bigger than his head. Is there a reason you use a down shooter instead of a scanner when doing paper animation like like the ones on an all-in-one printer? We use the down shooter because you can attach the pegs to the down shooter. The pegs being the 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 things that hold the, the drawings in registration to keep them from flickering, you know, to keep the the drawings in uh, solid in relation to one another so that the animation stays consistent. Um, I'm not sure of a scanning process where you can, I guess you can scan them and it'll actually, actually TV paint does that. Yeah, you can, you can do that. But, but even still, but it's just it's easier, significantly it's, faster to use a down shooter. Like even the fastest is. scanner is not as fast as the click of a camera. Exactly. That's the other thing. Yeah. So once again, if you, um, we are, this is going to be our last live stream. Uh, well, it's our first live stream of the year for our first Friday. So, um, we're, we're moving to only one public live stream a month now, and it's going to be the first Friday of every month. So this is our first Friday for January of 2024. And, um, we'll be doing this until we finish snow bear, which will be most of the year. And, uh, but if you want to, uh, join us more, more than that, and if you're interested in, in animated filmmaking and how to make your own animated film, then become a member over at creatureartteacher.com and you can join me every Tuesday and Thursday 
as I make snow bear. Uh, basically exactly what I'm doing now, but I'm also do, doing the backgrounds. I'm doing the effects animation. I'm doing lighting. I'm talking about compositing. I'm doing all kinds of different things to make the film and you can join me while I do it. We've got a great little family uh, of folks that join us now uh, that we've built up over the last year and a half. And we have so much fun and uh, we would love to, to build the family out. Uh, Zanji on Facebook has a question. Hey Zanji. Uh, Aaron, how much squash stretch and drag are you using on the tusks? Are they stiffer than the other materials? The tusks, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, the tusks I'm keeping stiff except the way that they're in his mouth they're going to drag at the pivot point so the tusks themselves so if i if i scrub through here because those aren't real tusks they're icicles yeah they're icicles but even still they're they're gonna stay they're gonna stay uh let me take that off there we go done they're going to stay stiff they're not going to change their shape but you can see as he exits out they're dragging at the pivot point at the contact point in his mouth sort of like you know if you had a stick in your mouth and you moved your head really quick this the length of the stick would drag so they're not they're not changing shape they're not getting they're not getting rubbery but where they're in his mouth they're going to drag see that <clears throat> i have two questions from twitch i'm just going to give them both to you and then you can hit them in the order you want uh the first is can i double up and learn 2d learn drawing by doing 2d animation like two birds with one stone and then the second question is how do i improve my 2d animation reel i put in all my best animation and work but it seems that it needs more i'm not sure what i should add though. acting acting is what you should add always have characters acting uh characters interacting a change of thought a change of emotion Anything that brings a character to life, that's what you want to, that's what you want to have in there. And also when going back to the first part of your question, as far as learning to draw while you animate, um, animating, especially 2d animation, the language of 2d animation is drawing. You know, when we, I always use the analogy of poetry. If you want to be a great poet, then whatever language you're writing your poetry in, you want to be really fluent in that language and not just fluent, but you want to be able to, you know, find combinations and, and meanings to words and things like that, that are maybe over the heads of a lot of different people. You want to be so hyper sensitive to that language that it'll, it'll help your poetry. And, and so animation is the same way. The better you can draw, the better you're, you can speak the language of animation. And so just keep in mind, if you're learning to draw while you're animating, which you can do, your animation is, is not going to be great in the beginning. It's going on, on, and I know you're not saying it's going to be great, but it's not going to be great in the beginning. But as you develop that language of drawing, your animation will improve. And that's all I have to say on that. <laughs> Um, if when snow bear is done, are you going to continue your Tuesday and Thursday member streams? Nope. I am retiring and you guys will never hear from me again. <laughs> He's kidding. No, we're, <laughs> yes, I'm kidding. About that? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we're going to, we'll, we'll continue our live streams. We're going to come up with new films to make. Yeah. We've got, a whole bunch uh, we've got all there. kinds of stuff that, uh, that we have in the, in the hopper. Speaking of which, for people who don't know what he's talking about, uh, twice a week we do members only live streams. And actually, Dustin, we've got a thing for the live for the memberships. Oh, yeah. uh, so we have two membership plans on our website. Uh, actually, we've got a streaming only one as well, uh, or a Snow Bear stream only one as well. But um, basically, if you become a member to our website, either an annual plan or a monthly streaming plan, you get access to all 700 hours of content on our website. If you're an annual member, you get all of the brushes, all of the uh, photo packs and all of that included. Uh, if you're a monthly member, you get a discount on those items. But both plans get you access to our twice a week animation live streams every Tuesday and Thursday. So if you sign up and become a member, you get exclusive access 
to the making of Snow Bear. It's basically like, like what we're doing here today, only it's a little more intimate. We get to answer a lot more questions, uh, get to go into a lot more detail about the process. We're showing, we're going to be showing pre-production, post-production, the whole process of the making the film. So if you're interested in, in animation and you really want to learn what it takes to make an animated film, I would highly encourage you to become a member. And if you do, you can use this weekend, you can use that promo code new year 24, and that'll take 24% off your order. So that's good for memberships, courses, et cetera. Again, if you use promo code new year 24, you can take 24% off your order this weekend only. Do you have any courses on how to draw or is your site only about animation and painting? We have tons of courses on how to draw. Yeah, just check it out. Go to the go to the website and got browse it. Hundreds of hours of animal drawing courses. We've got drawing fundamentals, figure drawing, costumed figure drawing. We're at we add new courses all the time. We've got three courses just on storyboarding. Yeah, animation is actually a small part of 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 the website yep, we've got courses on zbrush and digital sculpture clay sculpture macrame yeah <laughs> uh, what macaroni <laughs> what takes more work animating at disney or creature art teacher uh you know what they they rival each other i've definitely we've definitely graduated here at dis uh, a, a creature art teacher, we've definitely graduated up to uh, a very similar workload that I had at Disney. Are there more intimate streams saved as well and posted on YouTube? So no, those streams are saved, but you can only access them if you're a member. Yes. So uh, you can go back and rewatch any stream we've ever done. Uh, Which we've done a hundred and yeah, we just had 40. 145, I think, or 146, something like that. Someone said, now you need to make an April Fool's macaroni art course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you animating Snow Bear by yourself, or do you got a team also working on the... On Doing the it by myself. I've always had a dream of animating my own film. And so this is me trying to fulfill that dream. This will be the the only time I ever do this. <laughs> but um, but I've always wanted to animate my own film, and so that's what we're doing, or that's what I'm doing. I wanted to do, you know, because my background is in illustration and drawing and painting. Um, I wanted to do all the backgrounds as well, because you know the the painting aspect of it, along with the animation and the design. <laughs> Bridget asks, I feel like I have a decent understanding of anatomy. I've done thousands of practice drawings. As soon as I try to draw out of my head, I feel like I forget it all. Do you have any advice? You're just not there yet. I it, and I know it feels like you've got a good handle on it, but if you're if you're still struggling with uh, coming out of your head, um, then it's just it's not there yet. And you just got to keep practicing. And focus on drawing like the volume shapes. Like if, if you're yeah. talking about drawing the figure out of your head, think about the overlapping shapes and the main like shapes, the the cylinders and stuff like that. Exactly. And then add the anatomy on top of them. Gestural drawing, mm -hmm. all of that. Uh, did you animate the penguin one by yourself? I, yes, I did. Yeah, I did all the backgrounds and the animation in that as well. Uh, the color uh, was done by Claudia and Nick. Yep. So we'll have some color assistance, but that's going to be pretty much it. Everything else is being done by Aaron on Snow Bear and on the Dream Short. Yeah. Sorry. Were you talking about Dream? Or were yes. You... Sorry. I was reading a question. Someone was asking the same question about Snow Bear. So I was. Uh. Did Hans Simmer compose the music? first the soundtrack and then you draw on it after or is the music composed after the movies are made the movie the music's composed after unless it's a song right yes that's true yeah so the the score is composed after songs are written first 
um, or at least rough demo. Yeah, the song is written first because we need the, the demo to, to work from. But a lot of times we'll, we'll work from the demo and then, um, uh, and then the final will be recorded later. Leo asks, I've taken all of your courses religiously, but I'd also love to have some recommendations of books from you about illustration. Um, well, I, one that Aaron always recommends is The Illusion of Life. It's a it's a Disney, it's a book by Frank and Ollie from Disney. And yep. it's, it covers, Frank Tommy and Ollie, John, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston. <laughs> yeah, it covers a lot about the animation industry and, and it's kind of like the Bible for animation. Um, if you're Carol into, Whitlatch. Carol Whitlatch has three wonderful books. Oh, she has more than three, but she's got three great books on um, drawing and illustration. Uh, James Gurney has some great books on drawing and light and painting. Um, I look up all, all of those. So Carol Whitlatch, James Yousef, Gurney. Um, what's her, name? her book's out. Samantha Youssef. Samantha Youssef. Her book's out of print. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting. Still a great book if you can find it. Which means she sold out. Yeah. I don't mean she sold out. I mean, right, she no, sold I out. <laughs> uh, which animation legend do you look up to and would have liked to have met? Well, I mean, the one I, I do know very well, a couple of them, um, and work with, and have worked with, is Glenn Keane, Mark Henn. Uh, everything I know I learned from those guys. We just got a text during the stream from John Pomeroy, by the way. Oh, and John Pomeroy too. Yeah, there you go. And um, and I, you know, I, I met Ward Kimball and Frank Thomas, Ollie Johnston, Mark Davis. I met all those guys, um, uh, and they, you know, those guys were incredible. But I think the most influential for me was always Glenn. Glenn Keane was always, and still is, he's incredibly passionate and generous with his time. And I wish we had kept in better touch. We don't keep in touch much anymore. But, um, but yeah, Glenn, Glenn is probably the biggest influence on me professionally. Another newcomer uh, of the day is asking, how long uh, will this uh, short be, approximately? 10 minutes and 27 seconds. That's what I've got so far. Matter of fact, let me double check that. It might have gotten longer. Son of a... 10 minutes and 27 seconds and 15 frames. Son of a man. I've got to do some reboarding over the weekend and it may shrink or it may grow. I don't know. Or it may stay the same. The goal is to keep at least keep it the same. Uh, YouTube comment, dear Aaron, it's so awesome to have watched brother bear as a kid and now to be watching your channel and learning from your lessons. Well, thank you. Uh, it's awesome for me as well. Have you ever encountered an animation task that was exceptionally challenging or frustrating to the point where you felt like giving up? Yep, every shot. <laughs> no, I had a lot of those. Not necessarily giving up, but really struggling. Animation's hard. Drawing is hard. Animation's hard. And there's no getting around that. And so, but over the years, you learn that you learn ways of getting through and figuring out your shots. I, I, you know, specifically have ways of breaking down the complexity of a shot. And I, it's like, you know, eating a giant meal. You, you do it one bite at a time or taking a long journey. You do it one step at a time. And so that's how I approach these, these difficult shots. And, um, and if you do it step by step, eventually, you look back and you go, wow, I, I did it. And, and you know, it's, it's done. Um, so animation uh, is hard, yes, but you can, it's not impossible, you know, especially with some of the hard shots. And you just got to figure them out. Uh, will there be speech in the film? Will there be what? Will there, will there be speech? Will there be... Life? No dialogue. No dialogue. I don't want to have to dub the film. I want it to be able to play all over the world um, and break language barriers by not having any language. <laughs> and 
it's the language of emotion. It's a, a, you know, there's a lot of universal language that we have in here. Loneliness and joy and all of these expre- uh, uh, emotions that he's going to go through. Um, and that's, that's what we're, we're shooting for. But no, no dialogue. Aaron, have you ever worked with Bruce Smith? Yes, I have worked with Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith is one of my favorite animators. He, Bruce Smith animated, for those of you that don't know, uh, one of his great, two of his great characters are Kerchek from Tarzan and Vassalier from Princess and the Frog. He also did Robin Williams' character in the uh, Return to Neverland at Disney's animation studio tour at MGM. Uh, Twitch comment, I just found Samantha Youssef's book for about $56 on Amazon, and it has a forward by Aaron Blaze. Oh, gee, forgot about that, huh? Yeah. (laughs) Well, gee. It is. I really love that book. And Samantha is an incredible artist. Yeah, hopefully it'll come back into print. We should reach out to her and find out what the... Uh, Maz on TikTok uh, writes, as a illustration student, I really enjoy your streams. Thank you for doing them. Oh, thank you. And uh, good luck with illustration. I was an illustration student myself. Break a leg there, bud. Aaron, do you ever see yourself making a full-length animated feature again? Yes. Yep, me too. Yes. We're going to be we're working towards it. Almost there. Question, is it true that Glenn Keane taught you how to animate characters? Yes. And Mark Hen. A lot of other people. How is cover art designed for a film? Who is in charge of that? I think they mean like the VHS box. Yeah, that's a whole different division. That's our marketing division. Now, a lot of times they'll come back to the feature animation people to help with some of the art because that's, you know, it's based on the films that we made. But, um, but the concepts and all that kind of stuff, that's all from the marketing division. Zanji says, that's wild, Aaron. I don't know if you producing a feature ever crossed my mind. (laughs) Stay tuned. Stay tuned. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, but we've got some, we've got some ideas. If it did happen overnight, it would be terrible. (laughs) You wouldn't want to watch it. Yeah, it wouldn't do very well. (laughs) Do you have any courses that provide any advice or instruction in organizing an animated production soup to nuts? No. Uh, Well, sort of we do, actually. Um, Yes and no. So we've got courses that from Chuck Williams where he covers story. So you get the whole writing component of it. Then he has a course on that where he also talks about pitching and production and coming up developing stories and and all of that so on the production side of it we've got a lot but we are going to be making a course with snow bear with snow bear so how to produce an animated short from beginning to end which is what i was getting at yeah so we're gonna when we when we finish this one of the first inspirations behind making snow bear was hey we want to do a course on how to make an animated short so why not make a short so that's where that started and it's grown from there. So when this is done, we're going to talk about where do the stories come from? How did we, along with, you know, there's the artistic side of it, but then there's also the practical side of actually making it. And yeah, we'll, we'll cover everything from how to track all of your shots, how to organize your shots, all of that. All the way through releasing. Any advice on keeping shapes consistent when animating? I'm making my sophomore film right now, and that's what I'm most worried about. 
Well, the biggest thing is, is really thinking about proportion. And as you think about your shapes, thinking about the, think about the proportions of those shapes in relation to one another. That's what you want to keep consistent. But even that can change depending on how broad your animation is. You know, you can really push those proportions. You know, even though Snow Bear is a somewhat uh, pulled, you know, tight, uh, uh, kind of in a, in a world that we, that we relate to kind of world, that it's not Warner Brothers, um, I'm still stretching and pushing proportion. And, you know, this is a perfect example right here of this, you know, this shot here. Are you going to release Snow Bear in theaters at all to get it to qualify for the Oscars, similar to what they did with I'm Hip? Yes. Yes. Right, that's the plan. Yeah, I haven't seen any new questions on, on TikTok in a little bit. TikTok's still running? Uh, TikTok should still be running. Do we still, do we have people viewing? Uh, we do. We do have people watching. We have about 45 people watching. All right. It's been a while. It's been a while since we have. Uh, because of the growth of the internet from the 2000s on, would you say it's become easier to get into the field of animation or has it become more competitive and difficult to break into the industry? You know, I, that's a really good question. And I, I'm the wrong one to ask. I, I think it's become easier to create your own animated films. I think the software has advanced and I think it's easier to share your work because of uh, social media and everything like that. Um, as far as getting into a studio, I don't know that that's really changed. I think, you know, the, the standards of what studios are looking for has always been the same. Uh, and I don't know that you know, the animation industry, as far as people trying to get into it, has really, has it really grown that much in the last 20 some odd years? I don't know that it's grown. I think it's probably the same amount of people wanting to get in. Um, I, I mean, I think there's more animation studios. I was just going to say, I think there's more opportunity probably out there uh, for for whoever wants to do whatever. You know, when you've got Netflix producing and you've got, you know, different platforms distributing content, who knows? I don't know. I don't, I don't have the numbers. Uh, Jesse asks, hey, Aaron, I've got a question about getting started with Procreate Dreams. Where do I start or do you have a class on it? Yes, we do. For $1, yep. you go to CreatureArtTeacher.com and we've got an entire course on getting started and animating in Procreate Dreams. It's a really fun course, too. And we do, Aaron takes you through the basics of animation. He takes you through using some of the features like the performance mode. He also takes you through animating over live action video. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff in it. Uh, question. Uh, oh, and by the way, you can get that at creatureartteacher.com slash dreams. Uh, will there be any character animation courses in Maya or 3D on the website? Um, I'll never say never. Right now, we don't have any. And, um, and we've, we've actually tried to get people. It's just everyone that the people that I want to get are working in the industry. And so it's hard to get um, it's hard to, for people to get the time. So we are still working on that. Uh, but you know, I'd like to say yes, but we just haven't, we haven't landed it yet. And Twitch comment. Well, I just spent my first dollar at creature art teacher. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, there you go. Thank you very much for the support. And, uh, by the way, the whole idea with those dollar classes is we think that first of all, we think the quality speaks for itself and hopefully you'll check out more classes. Hey, guess who just hopped into TikTok? Who? Dave Clayton. Dave. Dave. Dave Clayton has a course on our website, graphic design for artists and illustrators. That's 50% off right now. Look, I'm doing a portrait of Dave right here. Here he is. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's an animated portrait. Hello, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, look at that. I stopped it right on the frame I needed. <laughs> Does the gesture drawing lesson in the figure anatomy course overlap with the specific gesture drawing course? In other words, if I buy the anatomy course, am I covered for gestures as well? Yeah, there's some gestures, although my gesture class is more uh, in-depth than the gestures that I cover in um, the anatomy course. I would suggest that you get both and use promo code New Year 24. <laughs> Actually, be a member and you'll get everything. Yeah. Become a member. I, I, yeah, I mean, it's it really is a great deal. And uh, Tristan Harris... Uh, says, can you say to him that I have watched Brother Bear 100 times? Wow. 100 times. That's almost as many times as I've seen it as I've seen it. I've probably seen and it. And I made it. Many. Now, what are your thoughts about the future of the animators uh, and artists with AI being, in, being more involved? I think, um, first of all, if you're a filmmaker, you're always going to be a filmmaker. AI is never going to take over your job. Uh, is AI going to, are, are big companies going to use AI in ways that are going to affect people negatively? Yes. Is uh, AI going to come along and affect people positively? Yes. I don't know what the, that is yet, and no one knows, and we're all kind of speculating. Um, but as far as, like, me wanting to be an animator and continuing to make animated films, that's never going to change. Um, but I think Disney at some point will use AI. I think Pixar at some point will use AI. Um, and who knows how that's going to affect the market. Um, the market's already being affected from an illustration standpoint on people, you know, getting illustration jobs, visual development jobs, are being affected by AI, yes. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. Next month will be 20 years since I saw Brother Bear in the cinema. My first trip to the cinema. Wow, wow very nice. First trip to the cinema and it was Brother Bear. Would you consider doing another one? I remember my first trip to the Cinnabon. <laughs> 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 it's been 20 minutes since my last trip to the Cinnabon. Um, <laughs> would you consider doing another watercolor course? No. Move on. Next question. <laughs> well, no, we do, yeah, I'd love to do another watercolor it's course. From, that question is from Jasmine. Jasmine, if you like Aaron's course, you might want to check out a brand new course from Ronnie Williford. He's got an advanced watercolor course that's on our website. And we also have an amazing watercolor course from Jenny Medved about doing portraits in watercolor. Yeah. And it's it's completely different technique than what Aaron and Ronnie use. So I, I think you'll enjoy both of those. Yeah, so watercolor is one of my favorite mediums. Um, as far as painting mediums go, watercolor is my favorite. And so, yes, I'll be doing more courses on it, whether it's a recorded course or doing live uh, stuff. Uh, we'll definitely be doing more watercolor. Uh, I love the medium. And um, yes, yeah, so that's my short answer for sure. Faux show. Erica says, Ronnie's new course is amazing. Excellent. I think Erica's amazing. Erica is fantastic. She's fantastic. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I need to go to the restaurant real quick. I'll be right back. Hey, have fun with that, man. Oh, I will. I will have fun. <laughs> In 1977, I saw a documentary about Disney. I was five years old and very impressed, and I swore someday I was going to make my own movie. And since last year, I've been working on one. You're an icon. Thanks for all of your work. Oh, thank you. 1977, I was... How old was I? I was nine. That's when I went and saw Star Wars. I was negative three. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Jordan also says, hearing Aaron say animation is hard is both inspiring and comforting to know because I'm questioning my sanity while working on a music video. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult and there's nothing easy about animation. The best thing you can do with animation is to keep doing it. And so, you know, any project is always harder than you expect it to be. And, uh, and you just got to, you got to be in it for the long haul. Erica says, I just used InDesign for the first, uh, with some of the tricks that Dave Clayton showed in his course for a flyer I made today. Hey, very nice. That Dave Clayton knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Check out that course. Go to creatureartteacher.com and get graphic des design for artists and illustrators. You'll love it. Julia says, hello, I'm back. Hello, Julia. Have you ever watched the Soviet cartoons, The Snow Queen or The Hedgehog in the Fog by Shuzmut Film? <laughs> Say that again. Shuzmut Film? So no, I haven't. So I, actually, if I have, I don't, I don't know that I have. I have to check them out. They sound cool. Yeah. Hedgehog in the Fog. That's just fun to say for some reason. Yeah. Do you have courses on comparative analysis of anatomy? I do a lot, not specifically, but I do it in my drawing, animal drawing courses. I do tons of comparative anatomy analysis. That's a, that's one of my favorite things to talk about. And so I talk a lot, even, you know, in my bird drawing courses and my drawing horses, drawing bears, drawing wolves, drawing all those. I'm always talking about how their anatomy compares back to our own anatomy so that you can understand the anatomy that you're drawing. Uh, one, of my, one of my favorite things to say is that we all have the same parts. They're just shaped differently. Another Twitch comment. I just spent a dollar on your course, made you a dollar richer. Don't spend it all in, at once. I'm paying my mortgage. Thank you for the support. It really does help. Uh, any 2D animation tips that apply to 3D animation? Yeah, all of all of the principles. Every animation principle that we use in 2D also applies to 3D. Squash, stretch, appeal, overlap, all of those. They all they all it's all it's just different tools that you use to create the same effect. And beyond that, anything acting related yes, is gonna exactly. be the same. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do you like Studio Ghibli animation movies like Howl's Moving Castle, for instance? Yes. As a matter of fact, I was in Tokyo in 2004 and I went to Studio Ghibli and I met with Miyazaki and he was making Howl's Moving Castle at the time. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah. And, uh, and so I had a wonderful day talking with Miyazaki and going through the studio. He showed me all around and uh, it was great. Oh, so, so Erica says, I love that you can create a QR code in InDesign. It's so helpful. So <clears throat> for people who don't know, we're talking, we're talking about the InDesign course from Dave Clayton. And at the back of Aaron's art books, there are a whole bunch of QR codes. I did not know you could do that in, in design. I had been manually creating them and dragging <laughs> them in. So when I saw him do that, my jaw about hit the floor when I was thinking about how much time I wasted. Are you able to switch over? Yeah. yeah. So in my, in my art book, you know, I've got all these different paintings in here. But at the end, many of the paintings, I recorded the process. So we've got quite a few pages at the end of the book where all you have to do is scan the QR code next to the image and you'll be taken to a video that shows the process. This is something that I'm really, I, Nick came up with this idea and I really love that we have this and, and it's, you know, it's several pages. So there's a lot of illustrations in here that you can go in and follow that process right there. So. Very yeah, cool. and that, by the way, again, if you want to pick up those books, uh, Aaron has two art books, including the one he just showed you. Signed copies are available. And if you're in the USA, you can get free shipping on the books this weekend if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash books. 
Now Dustin's. back to your regularly scheduled program. Yes. I think Dustin fell in. <laughs> Any plan on doing a 2D effects course? I feel like that's the only thing missing from your website. Well, funny you mention that. We're starting that on Wednesday. We have our good friend, Joey Mildenberger, who is a veteran in 2D effects animation. I've known him for 35 years or 30 years, and he is flying in specifically to be with us for the next week as we film a 2D effects animation course. Uh, Joey's credits are insane, by the way. Yeah. Um, he's worked on, I mean, pretty much everything you can think of, but... Uh, He's worked on Atlantis, Treasure Planet. He worked on Nimona that just came out. He worked on The Little Mermaid. He worked on How to Haunt a House, which Aaron directed. Yes. Um, he worked on Tarzan, Mulan, Hercules, Hunchback, Runaway Brain, Pocahontas, A Goofy Movie, The Lion King, Thief and the Cobbler he worked on, Fern Gully, Rockadoodle, Rover Dangerfield, All Dogs Go to Heaven, An American Tale, Land Before Time. So he was with Bluth. <laughs> he was with Disney. I yeah. mean, he's, he's gone on to work with Netflix, Emperor's New Groove. So he's doing our 2D effects animation course. Yeah, and, uh, Joey, you know, in, in the spirit of wanting to only get top-notch veterans for doing these courses for us, um, Joey, you, you don't get much better than Joey at all. You, you don't. He's got so much experience, and, and uh, he's, he, just, he just animates so well. And, um, and so... I'm really excited to get, you know, we've been wanting to do this for a long time, getting a good effects animation course. And so we're so happy that we've got them. Which, out. which, by the way, if you become a member to our website, that course will be included for free. So if you take advantage of that New Year's deal and use promo code uh, New Year 24, you'll get 24% off your membership. And when that course comes out, you'll get it for free. So invest in yourself, invest in your future. That's one of the benefits of, of, you know, with our courses, one of the benefits that I've really uh, utilized is, you know, me having been in the animation industry, specifically with Disney, for as long as I was, I've been able to make friends with some of the great, really great artists that create films, have been creating films for the last 30 plus years. And so... I really, uh, I cash in, I cash in whenever I can, uh, that advantage. Yep. Thief and the Cobbler. People were like, you worked on that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I've got someone new here asking, uh, who are you drawing? I am drawing Glenn. Uh, this, the, the name of our polar bear from our film Snow Bear, we've called, we name him Glenn after Glenn Keane, my mentor. But um, uh, we never know his name in the story, but we, we call him Glenn. Uh, but this is a shot of him. He's uh, playing around with some walruses. And so he's taken some icicles and jammed them up in his mouth. <laughs> and uh, and this is his, this is the reveal of him <laughs> coming up and kind of hamming it up for the camera. <laughs> and then he slides into the next shot. So there he goes. So these are what we've just finished, basically tying down all the keys. And so now what we need to do is go through and in between it. So that's what I'll be doing next week is uh, in betweening this. But we, I think we've had a good, nice stopping point. But let's go ahead and cut it into the reel. So here's a, let's turn off. Actually, let's do this. Let's turn off the, now you can see it tied down. That's what he looks like without the rough drawing. So then what we got to do is go through and color it in and uh, do the in-betweens and then color it in and, and uh, we'll be good to go. It's looking good. <laughs> there it is. I got two, um, two comments are pretty, uh, pretty similar to each other. So I'm just going to merge them together. Um, Kid Fury uh, says my first cuddly toy from Disney is Coda. And oh, wow. Tr and Tristan Harris says, uh, uh, 
uh, I did not know about uh, what Brother Bear was until I watched it at school. It also says Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is in Dakota, but we've got a cool animal we can show. <laughs> How's it going, eh? <laughs> There's a big keen eye plushie. It's yeah. show for the uh, TikTokers. <laughs> Don't mind me, Aaron. <laughs> Don't mind me, there, bud. Hey, bud. So what he's going to do here, now you'll notice in this next shot, he comes kind of waddling in. He's not going to do that. We've changed the action. So I, I decided to do kind of this swishy you know, really kind of uh, uh, exaggerated kind of move that he does in the beginning. So he's going to come sliding in to the next shot. So he comes up, hello, and then he slide, <laughs> then he'll slide into this shot and strike that pose, and then we'll see the walruses get angry. <laughs> it's been fun to draw i'm you know anytime i get to push uh the acting or push the expression um it's always a lot of fun so this shot has been a lot of fun and you know we've been able to get this uh basically in two in, in a day because i've jumped over and done other work on other shots in the last two days so this really has only taken a day to get this far so if you really plant your butt in your seat and draw, this is what I'm always preaching, you can get a lot of work done. You can really get a lot of work done. But there we are. He's getting his icicles. Gives some to Snow Bear. Takes two for himself. Boop. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so there we go. So this has been our last, well, it's not our last live stream for the public, but um, this is our last every Friday live stream. So the next live stream we're going to do is going to be February, what is it? It'll be the first Friday. So we're going for these public streams. February, they're going to be the first Friday of every month. So our next... February 2nd. Yes. Ground... No, that's not Groundhog Day. What am I talking about? It is. Oh, it, it is. is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. February 2nd. That'll and it's be our... also going to be on February 2nd. <laughs> oh, yeah, you there know what else yeah. uh, on February second? Yeah, our next stream. That's yeah. awesome. That's cool. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today. Um, and like I said, if you want to do more, uh, join us for more of the animation process and learning how to make an animated short. As I make Snow Bear, um, come and become a member over at CreatureArtTeacher.com and join us every Tuesday and Thursday as we make it. We've still got about six months left to uh, make this project. Yeah, so you get to tune in twice a week. You get to watch Aaron as we are gonna do production, post-production. You're gonna get to see the music, the editing, everything, the scoring process. Um, and now is a great time to become a member. If you go to our website and you use that promo code New Year 24, you can take 24% off any uh, membership or course order, brush set, photo pack, what have you. But I would put it towards that membership. That is a great deal because we've got courses this year coming out, new courses from Aaron. We've got courses from Joey Mildenberg, like we just talked about, yeah. the 2D effects animation. We've got a new course from Armand Serrano coming out. David Coleman is already filming a new course. We've got a new course from Mel Milton coming out. Marco Bucci is filming a course. And those are, <laughs> we've got a lot of stuff yeah. in the works. And those are, uh, we've got a new course from Tim Hodge. Those are just courses that I can already tell you about. And we've got a bunch more beyond that. So this is gonna probably be our biggest year of releasing courses that we've ever done. So go become a member at Creature Art Teacher. Use that code for 24% off and you'll get everything on the site right now plus everything we release over the next 12 months. There and you go. These Snow Bear exclusive streams. Bam. Bam. That doesn't convince you. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Yeah, I don't know what will. I really had a great time. And um, like I said, you know, hopefully I'll see you next Tuesday uh, for our next stream. And if not, we'll see you... February 2nd for our Friday stream. 
Um, and until then, go out and put some beauty back into the world because that's what we do as artists, and I think the world needs it. Yeah. So go on out, do that, be safe, have a great weekend, and I will talk to you next time. Bye, yeah. everybody. Thank you. We'll Can't see you next be, time. Bye.